Number 8. Patricia Ebel A bikini-clad grandma named Patricia Ebel found herself in some hot water back in 2015 when she rear-ended a Ford Mustang with her BMW. She was driving her 10-year-old grandson home from a day at the pool in Naples, Florida when the crash occurred. A local news crew captured the strange scene on camera as Collier County Sheriff's deputies administered a sobriety test to the barely clothed woman. She smelled strongly of alcohol, according to the arrest report, and allegedly she completely bombed the sobriety test. Police accused Ebel of having a blood alcohol content of more than twice the legal limit and charged her with driving under the influence. When a reporter asked the grandmother if she knew why she was being taken into custody, she said no. A judge sentenced Ebel to probation and banned her from drinking alcohol for a year. Apparently, the message didn't sink in though because she was busted again for drinking in 2016. This time, her blood alcohol content tested at more than twice the legal limit during her visit to a probation officer. Oh, granny. Ebel managed to sort out her legal issues and in 2017, she opened up to Inside Edition about her scandalous run-ins with the law. She said that several people offered to buy the bikini she was wearing when she got her DUI, but that she held on to the two-piece. Patricia also admitted that she still drives around in a bikini, but that she wears a cover-up now, which perhaps isn't as crazy as it sounds, considering she lives in Florida. Number 7. Michael Swanson Police in Midwest City, Oklahoma received an alarming call last year from a local resident named Jackie Roller, who said that a 13-year-old grandson Chris had been shot by a 69-year-old relative named Michael Swanson. Some news articles identify the suspect as the boy's grandfather, but it's unclear whether that was the case. Needless to say, it's safe to assume that the elder gentleman was a grandfather-like figure to the teen until he decided to shoot him. Officers rushed to the scene where they were met with Swanson's threats to either kill himself or force the police to kill him because he refused to go back to prison. The suspect initially held the victims hostage, but he eventually let them go. The standoff between Swanson and law enforcement lasted for hours. Police deployed tear gas and summoned a SWAT team and finally managed to get the distressed elderly man out of the house. Christopher, the teen who was shot in the ordeal, said that Swanson fired a bullet at him after the two got into an argument. When his grandmother Jackie arrived home, Swanson reportedly told her that she might want to go check on the boy and admitted to shooting him. He also told Jackie that he wasn't done shooting Chris and that he planned to do it again, this time in front of her. He then allegedly said that he was going to kill the entire family. The boy's aunt Christina Slemmer told local station KFOR that Swanson had started acting strange after moving in with the family and that they suspected him of using drugs. He was charged with shooting with intent to kill and for being a felon in possession of a firearm. Number 6. Christopher Allen Recent news reports out of Greensburg, Indiana detail the shocking accusations against 48-year-old grandfather Christopher D. Allen, who is facing an attempted murder charge for allegedly attacking his five-month-old granddaughter. Little Briley Adams wound up in the hospital with catastrophic injuries. At last update, her condition was improving, but she was still fighting for her life. Briley's family told police that Christopher attacked her out of nowhere one afternoon in March and that he hit the baby in the face multiple times, to the point where she turned blue and needed CPR. Loved ones were left baffled that someone could do that to a helpless child, let alone their own granddaughter. Fraternal grandmother Jennifer Powers told local station Fox 59 that she was struggling to process how or why the unfathomable ordeal happened. She further explained that she didn't even remember the ride to the hospital because she was in complete shock. The baby is expected to survive, but will be in a neck collar for several months as she endures a lengthy road to recovery from a fractured eye socket, a fractured skull, and serious neck injuries. Briley also suffered from a brain bleed and was hooked up to a feeding tube because she was unable to swallow when she arrived at the hospital. Her mother, Madeline Hadley, was heartbroken, but hopeful in a news interview during which she said the little girl is a fighter and that she is even smiling and playing with her toys despite all she's been through. Hadley hopes to learn what caused her father to act so out of character. Alan is currently being held on a $10 million bail. His trial is scheduled to begin June 7th. Number 5. Chuck Moser 
Late last year, a 70-year-old grandfather from Virginia named Charles Chuck Mooser was arrested for allegedly jumping off skyscrapers with a parachute. Someone had captured the incident on camera and reported it to the police. A subsequent investigation led them to Mooser, who they have accused of trespassing onto private property in Fairfax County for the sake of jumping off a building that was under construction. Detectives also connected the suspect with two similar incidents that took place in 2020. Mooser adamantly denied the allegations in an interview with Fox 5 DC. The military veteran, avid runner, home improvement contractor, and grandfather of six told the station that he's simply the fall guy for crimes that detectives have failed to identify the real culprit behind. The act of base jumping is not illegal in the area, but for safety reasons, it's definitely not recommended. Police have investigated numerous base jumping incidents in recent years based on the fact that the jumper trespassed onto private property to carry out their daring deed. Mooser was a suspect in at least six incidents, but he was never charged in civil cases due to a lack of evidence, and most of them exceed the statute of limitations at this point. In other words, it's too late to slap Mooser with additional charges for incidents that happened a long time ago, whether he's guilty or not. The suspect is all too aware of how far back the allegations and police probes against him go, but he made sure to point out that there was a lack of proof behind the suspicions, including any fingerprints at the crime scene or footage revealing his actual face. Moser himself agrees that the area where the most recent incident occurred isn't very safe for base jumping. He faces three misdemeanor trespassing charges. His court date was set for February 12th, but we were unable to find any news updates on how the case played out. Number 4. Charlotte Simpson In 2019, when a green minivan failed to pull over for flashing lights in London, Kentucky, police weren't just going to go away. They followed the vehicle until it pulled into a driveway and proceeded to question its occupants, 32-year-old Rebecca Jean Fultz and her 69-year-old mother, Charlotte Simpson. Officers originally planned to pull the minivan over for a simple traffic stop, but they soon realized that both women were wanted on outstanding bench warrants. Things took an even uglier turn when Rebecca refused to exit the vehicle, at which point Charlotte declared that there was a baby in the van. But the child safety seat was empty, and there were no signs of an infant at first glance. After rifling through the garbage-strewn, insect-infested vehicle filled with bags of trash and feces-covered clothing, the police found a 16-day-old baby boy on the floor between the two front seats. He was covered in ants, dehydrated, had a dirty diaper, and was struggling to breathe, according to Laurel County Sheriff's Office. The agency also pointed out that the van had no air conditioning and the situation was dire. A deputy drove the ambulance to the hospital so that the paramedics could tend to the ailing child. Police arrested Fultz and Simpson on several charges, including first-degree criminal child abuse. In a jailhouse interview with local station WKYT, Fultz claimed that the police exaggerated the severity of her son's condition. She insisted that he had just a few heat bumps and that she wasn't a bad mother. But she declined to explain why the baby wasn't in his car seat. Simpson told the interviewers that Rebecca was a good mother, but also failed to explain the little boy's obviously unacceptable condition. Number 3. Linda Kennison a 58-year-old grandmother from Connecticut named Linda Kinnison made headlines on Thanksgiving this year when she was arrested in connection with the death of her six-week-old grandson. Just days earlier, her daughter Crystal Krasowski had dialed 911 and reported that her baby was pale and that there was stuff coming out of his nose and that he was breathing lightly. He was rushed to the hospital where he died a few days later. A post-mortem examination found no clear signs of abuse, according to the state police. Kennison told investigators that she and Crystal had found the baby in his distressed state after placing him in a bassinet. But the women's stories didn't add up, so detectives pushed harder for information, hoping one of them would crack. Crystal allegedly admitted that she had smothered the boy for 20 minutes until he stopped moving because she was stressed out about life. She already had one child to take care of and didn't feel like she could handle another. When her son became still, she reportedly put him in a swing and simply carried on with her day. Kennison, who was at the home that day, admitted that she knew the baby wasn't breathing, but claimed that she had no idea Crystal had hurt him. 
They tried putting food in the child's mouth to make it look like he was alive and well, but it didn't work. When the deranged mother-daughter duo finally decided to call 911, Kennison allegedly told Crystal to lie to the police to avoid losing custody of her other child. During the call, she followed her mother's advice and claimed that the baby was breathing lightly. But this clearly wasn't the case, according to prosecutors. Police charged Crystal with first-degree manslaughter. Kennison was charged with risking injury to a child. Number 2. Drinking on an Empty Stomach Police in Broadview Heights, Ohio, recently responded to a call about a car accident involving one vehicle on Interstate 77. The person who called 911 described seeing the car smashed against the guardrail with the driver slumped over the steering wheel. Officers arrived on the scene to find it as the caller described. The crash involved a silver Hyundai Elantra with Pennsylvania plates, a heavily damaged front end, and a missing front tire. According to police, the wound behind the wheel smelled strongly of booze and wasn't wearing a seatbelt. She reportedly complained that her wrist hurt and that she was on her way to her son's home to visit her granddaughter. The driver claimed that the vehicle hit a patch of ice while she was taking a quick second to look at her phone, at which point she lost control of the car. An officer noticed a wet spot on her pants while walking her to an ambulance, indicating that she may have urinated on herself. A search of the woman's car turned up several empty single-shot bottles of Fireball Whiskey. She allegedly admitted to drinking the alcohol and taking oxycodone on an empty stomach earlier in the day. The grandma was taken in on a slew of charges, including driving drunk, not wearing a seatbelt, failure to control, and open container. Number 1. Grandpa I in early March, police on the Philippine island of Catanduanes charged a 63-year-old grandfather with nearly 1,500 counts of rape. A law enforcement spokesperson identified the suspect only by his alias, I. The arrest came after a regional judge issued a warrant for the man's arrest for 1,050 counts of statutory rape and 437 counts of rape. He was the region's most wanted suspect at the time he was charged, and he is accused of repeatedly victimizing two young relatives over a five-year period. These are some extremely serious allegations, which is why there was no recommended bail in this disturbing case. The survivors are now in a safe and secure place, and the suspect remains behind bars while he waits to be brought to justice for his alleged heinous actions. No maximum possible sentence has been announced, but in the Philippines, any rape charge can carry a life sentence. Speaking with Vice News, police spokesperson M. Sol Ikawat described the case as shocking. The arrest came shortly after the Philippine president signed a bill raising the legal age of consent from 12 to 16. Activists hope that the milestone legislation will help authorities tackle the ongoing problem of sexual abuse against children in the country, where 7 out of every 10 rape survivors are minors. Thanks for watching. Would you rather receive a phone call from your 8-year-old grandmother asking for bail money or have to survive an entire month on nothing but prison food? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye!